All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to use SAS and how to customize Bootstrap using SAS. Now, the reason you'll need SAS, there are millions of reasons, but I'm gonna show you one, right? So let's say we made a web app, any sort of website. So usually when we make a web app, we'll go to our HTML site and we'll load this, let's say, as a link to our Bootstrap CDN, which basically just includes the regular Bootstrap styles and all of that. Now, what happens with that if we open our application? It's basically just gonna use regular Bootstrap styles. So if you, let's say, do something, you get some results, right? You have your buttons, the way bootstrap buttons work and you have all this other stuff, whatever it's gonna be. And then also we have like, for example, the buttons, so with these colors. So you are very likely to want to change some of these default styles that come from bootstrap. So how do you actually do that? And this is where you will need to get bootstrapped SAS version and basically just change things up and recompile it to a new file. To do that, we're gonna have to do a bunch of things. So as usual, we're gonna need Node.js and Visual Studio Code installed. So if you don't know how to install those, I just put a video up for that. I'm not gonna go through that in this video. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder on my machine and I'm gonna open that in Visual Studio Code. Someplace on my computer, make a new folder. I'm gonna call this bootstrap test. I'm gonna fire up Visual Studio Code, there it is, and I'm gonna make sure I open that in Visual Studio Code by simply just dragging it over here. I'm gonna open my integrated terminal under View menu, and here, let's just go through some basics of SAS, why we use it, how we use it, and what are some main things you need to understand about it. If we have, let's say, a web page with some files in it, I'm just gonna keep this simple. Let's go ahead and make a HTML file. I'm gonna call it home.html. And here we'll do exclamation tab to do the main body of this. In this body, very quickly, I'm gonna do h1, and then below it, I'll do a paragraph, below it, I'll do an h2, below it, we'll do another paragraph. I'm gonna hit tab. Here, I'm just gonna type some text. So in this HTML, you'll usually want to do some sort of styles. So you can either do your integrated styles when you do the style over here, basically just do your CSS right in here. Or what you do, you just create a separate CSS file over here. So we'll just call it style CSS and then you just link to that file by going here and making this link on top, which is basically what happens when you copy and paste that bootstrap. Only instead of linking to a local file, it links to HTTP, blah, 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 some CDN. So we need to match this file name, style CSS, style CSS. As you can see, that's matching by default, so that's good. So now let's say in the style CSS, I want to style all of these things, like h1, h2, paragraph. So Let's say I go here and do an H1. And for this, we'll do color purple. And then we'll do an H2, should also be color purple. I'm also gonna add a button to this, just for the sake of this. So let's do button. That's good. So now if I go to style CSS, I can style that button, so I'm gonna say the button needs to have a background color purple, the color of the text should be white, and maybe we'll also style our paragraphs here. So this is pretty much all the CSS I did for that HTML. So if I just open that HTML, and for now I'll just open it the conventional way by going to that folder and opening it. We basically have, see this titles and this and this button, etc. And you could also style the borders. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna add something as a border below this main title and next title too, 
just so that we have an example of that. And let's say for this H1, we're gonna do a two pixel border and it's gonna be solid and it's gonna be again purple or maybe this time it will be gray color. Now, I just want this border below, so I'll do border bottom. And I'm gonna repeat the same sort of thing for H2, only for H2 we'll do one pixel instead of two pixels, something like this. So again, if I save this, just go back and reload this to see what this looks like. We have these lines. So I'm gonna stop at that. Now, this is not a CSS class in the end of the day. I want to now show you why do we need SAS. If we build this website and we start doing all these elements that we're styling, at some point, we're gonna end up with a bunch of styles and because our theme for the website is using a lot of purple, we're gonna use this purple color for a lot of different things. Now, if we decide to change it to a different color or maybe just a different shade of purple, then we have to go through the entire thing and change all of this purple stuff all over our code. And right now with this very small code, we already have multiple places where we need to address these things. So that's one reason to use SAS because SAS is gonna allow you to use variables. So let's create an example of that. So I'm gonna go here and do styles.scss and we'll use scss, not SAS, but we'll just call it SAS. So here, I'm basically just gonna copy the same thing and paste it and go on top here and create a variable. I'm gonna say main and in SAS for variables, which is for me weird, you can use a dash. Main color should be purple. So now once I have this main color variable, I can copy that and go instead of this purple, just use that variable main color. And now we only have it in one spot. So if we wanna change all of those to a different color, we can just change it right in here. Now the same thing we can apply to this gray, right? So I can go and do underline color, create another variable and say that should be gray. Now you could also apply that same variable to like this size and change it or this solid and change it, whatever you wanna change, you can apply it in different places. But for right now, that's gonna be it. So I've just used two variables inside of this SAS, right? So now the problem is that HTML is not gonna be able to load this. So we need something that will convert this to CSS, which is the language that it understands for this whole thing to work. Now for that, you could use a bunch of different tools, but what I'm going to use is something that's called parcel. Now, parcel is not something you would probably just use for SAS, but there are 100,000 reasons why you need it. And as we go through different tutorials, you'll see why that's more useful. For right now, we're just gonna install parcel just to do this SAS. So to install parcel, we need to just go to our terminal and do npm install dash g to do a global installation of this. And we're gonna do parcel bundler. So I'm gonna do this and run this installation and that should go ahead and install parcel. So as you see, I got some errors while I was installing this. So I'm just gonna run this again as an administrator. So I'm gonna go back and do sudo and npm install the same thing. It's gonna ask for your admin password, so you'll just enter that. And hopefully this time there will be no errors. All right, so that's much better. Now I'm gonna try to do this on a Windows to see what happens when we run the same command on a Windows machine. So if you're having a hard time installing this on Windows, I have a video covering this. So I'm gonna click here in this terminal and usually when you hit enter, that kind of opens up. So now I should be able to do my npm install dash g parcel bundler. So that seemed to have gone well, so we should have our parcel installed. 
However, when I try to run it, I get an error because apparently our setup doesn't let us run the script. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run a command here and change the execution policy. So let me now go back and try to run parcel. And there it is. So we have this, so V apparently is not a valid command, but the whole thing runs. So we're good. And if I just type parcel, see it's asking me that you didn't provide the entry. So this is actually valid error. So it runs just fine. So if you get this, we probably want to allow access for this to be able to set up our local host. And we'll talk about that later, but for now I'm just gonna allow access. And that's our setup. So I'm just gonna put this line that I ran on Windows machine again in the description. So if you need to do this, you can. So on my Mac, I don't have to do any of that. It should just work fine. Now, just so that you have some idea what we're actually installing here, if you go to parceljs.org, this is what we're installing. And if I go to get started, this is pretty much what's happening here. So, and if you look, there is that installation right here on their getting starting page, npm install dash G parcel bundler. Now, as you saw with Windows, we have some more tricks we have to do to make this work. But other than that, it's done, so we have it installed. Now, what this is gonna allow us to do once we have it installed is gonna allow me now to compile my SAS files to a regular CSS. So if you still remember why we're doing this whole thing. So if I go back to my Visual Studio code here, I want to take this styles dot scss file and compile it to a css file so what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this css file so what we can do now because we have parcel installed i'm going to run this command i'm going to do parcel and then build and then we're going to do the entry file so it's going to be the styles dot scss and for now i'm just going to run this as is so you can see what happens without doing anything else so if i hit enter See, it had to go and get something installed, which is one of the good things about Parcel. You don't have to worry about installing all of those. So it did some things, as you can see. It did a package.json for us. It did all of the stuff, but mainly we're interested in looking inside of this dist folder. So if I open here, see, there's this styles.css. There's also this map thing that we don't need, but for now, let's look at this CSS. So what this is, is basically, compiled CSS and it's now minified. And just so you can see what is happening here, let's actually rerun that. So I'm gonna hit the up arrow key and I'm gonna add no minify. You would usually want to minify it, but I'm gonna do no minify so you can see what happens. It's gonna rebuild this and there it is. Now I have this styles.css file in this dist folder. And if you look, at the results, it's basically just putting all those variables where they belong, right? So now I have a regular CSS file out of this entire thing. So let me actually delete this dist folder. So anytime you rerun that command, it will create that and put the files in there. I also want to show you how to not have that map happening. And if I go to their docs, if I go see on the left here, there should be a CLI, there it is. And CLI is basically command line commands, command line interface. So here, see it has that command that I was running. This is using HTML, I was using that SAS file. And if I keep going, oh, apparently it's version I had to do to get that, all right. So see, there is this out dir. We can say which directory we want to put that in. So if I didn't want to put that in this dist, directory, what I could do, I could just go back in here and after that style CSS, I'm gonna do outer and say which directory I wanna put that in. And if I do dot, that should consider that the current directory. Now, no minify, I'm gonna keep that for now. I want to see how to do the map. There it is, no source map. So if I go back and do no source map, that should also not do the source maps now. So right now, if I rerun this, 
See, now it's putting that style CSS in the current folder because I set my output directory to be the current directory. That's the period and no minify and no source map. There is no that extra source map file. Now we have our style CSS, which is this. So now let me show you the other thing that's really cool with SAS is that when your project grows and you get lots of CSS, now it's difficult to manage it all in one place. So what you could do, you could create other files that you can import. So I can go here and create another file in here and call this one other as CSS. And for this other files that you're gonna be including, you want to do this underscore in the file name. So here, let's say we want to do some rules and that rule is gonna be, let's say for our bottom borders for whatever reason. Now I wanna make sure I include this inside of my main file. And when you do your imports, it's probably best to do them after you declare your variables. So I'm gonna do import and then point to that file. So the file is called other. So you don't want to do the underscore, which is kind of weird. You just put the name of the file without the underscore, without the SCSS, just like that. So now if I go back and recompile this with that same command, Let's go check what our style CSS looks like. See, now I have that button here and this button here as well. So I have both of them. I was able to import this other file inside of this. So this way you can have different files. You can import different files as you need them. So you have one place when you're styling your forms another place where you're styling this and so on and import all that. And another great feature about SAS is that you can also do nested CSS classes. So for example, if I have a class called product and this will have different things inside of that product class that we need to address, so different elements. So what you could do, you could say, okay, so in this product, if we have an image, we want to apply certain classes for this. And then I can do also in that product, maybe there is something else we want to do. So maybe if there's a button inside of that product, you can also assign classes to the product itself. So I can go here and do like the border for the product should be one pixel solid black or something. And by the way, I should be able to also use my variables here, right? So if I go here and say, I want to use that underline color for this border, I can just go here and use the same gray and use the same variable and go here and do this. All right, so now let's recompile this to see what happens. So if I go here and recompile this, let's look at the style CSS. So see, we have that product that has an image inside of it and it automatically just made it as a CSS. We have the button, which has all of this. We have that product, which has that gray. So there are 100 million other things there is about SAS, but overall this should give you idea why we use SAS and why it's so cool to use.